Wow. <laughs> All right. Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another very interesting problem from, an, from a past JE advanced test dealing with thermodynamics, in this case, radiation from the human body. So they tell us that a human body has a surface area of approximately one square meter. The normal body temperature is 10 K degrees, Kelvin degrees, above the surrounding room temperature, which is set at T sub naught. Take the room temperature to be 300 Kelvin, for T equals 300 Kelvin, sigma, the Boltzmann constant, times T sub naught to the fourth power, is equal to 460 watts per square meter. So now they tell us, here are four statements. Which of these four statements are correct? Could be one, could be all four, perhaps even none. All right, let's work our way through that a little bit. First of all, let's look at the Stefan Boltzmann's law. We know that the power radiated is equal to the emissivity times sigma times the area times temperature to the fourth power. But in this case, E is approximately equal to one, and the area is approximately equal to one. And that's where we have the equation that the power is equal to sigma times T to the fourth power, which is what we have over there. And they claim that it's 460 watts per square meter for a temperature, and T sub naught is the room temperature equal to 300 K. All right, so now they ask us, the amount of energy radiated by the body in one second is close to 60 joules. Now, if this is equal to 460 watts per square meter, well, what? That would be joules per second. So this is equal to 460 joules per second per square meter. And notice the amount of energy radiated by the body in one second is close to 60 joules. Well, if the body is warmer than the room temperature, and this is the power radiated by the room for one square meter, then the body would then radiate more than that. So more than 460 joules every second. So 60 joules doesn't appear to be correct, so I'm going to choose that to be a wrong answer. Now for part B, it's kind of a long sentence. If the room temperature reduces by a small amount, delta T, where delta T is much, much less than T sub naught. So the room temperature drops by a little bit, so that the difference in temperature between the body and the room has grown a little. Then for the human living being, they, as they stipulate that the human is living, that it's not a dead corpse, that it's actually living, for the temperature of the body to remain the same, the human needs to radiate more energy per unit time. Now, it turns out, if you take the derivative of this, you do indeed get 4 sigma t to the third power, and you get dp dt, if you put a dt over here, you indeed get the derivative, that would be the change of the radiation, with a small change in the temperature. But the trick here is, you know, you'd be, you say, well, if I take the derivative, I get that, that must be right. But actually notice, if the room temperature drops, for the body to remain at the same temperature, it would not be a, a good idea to increase the radiation of the body, because if, if a body increases the radiation, that would mean that more heat is escaping, that would actually cause the body temperature to reduce, not increase. Now, the body will increase more, uh, more radiation if the difference is greater, uh, but by radiating more relative to the room, um, then you'd get colder. You'd want to put on a jacket or something, or a sweater or a coat, to keep radiating to stay at the same body temperature when the difference in the room temperature becomes greater. So this is a, a wrong statement for the reason is that if you radiate more energy, the body temperature will actually decrease, not stay the same. So that's also wrong. How about C? Reducing the exposed surface by curling up allows the person to maintain the temperature while reducing energy loss, and that would be the case. If you curl up, then not all of the exposed part of the body would radiate out into the room. If you curl up, you would cover up some parts of that, so it wouldn't radiate to the room, but to the rest of the body. You'll stay warmer if you curl up, so this is a correct statement. Curling up will indeed keep you warmer, so C is indeed a correct statement. And finally, D, if the body temperature rises significantly, then the peak of the spectrum of the EM emitted by the body will shift to the longer wavelengths. That sounds like black body radiation. So let's do that. Let's draw a curve. 
Here's a typical curve of the black body radiation, and so this would be the peak wavelength. Now, if the body temperature gets warmer, it causes the peak to shift to the left and higher, so this is what would happen if you had a warmer temperature. And so there would be a shift to the left that would be smaller lambda. And is that what they're saying? If the body temperature rises significantly, then the peak of the spectrum of VNM emitted by the body will shift to the longer wavelengths. Longer wavelengths is to the right, the shift is to the left, so it's the shorter wavelengths, so that's also an incorrect statement. Turns out in this case, there's only one correct answer. The only answer that's correct is if the body, if you curl up your body, you stay warmer. And that's the only true statement out of the four. And that is how it's done. We know the degrees Kelvin is not that cold. The room temperature at 300 Kelvin, that's normal room temperature. Yeah. That's like a warm, actually, it's kind of a warm day. Yeah. 27 degrees would be warm. Cold. No, it's not a matter that it's cold, but your body would be warmer than the room by about 10 degrees because the body is about 37 degrees Celsius and the room temperature would be at 27, so a difference of about 10, so that seems to be yeah. correct. And uh, you, so you would still be radiating. The net radiation would still be into the room rather from the room coming back. That's another kind of tricky question on the first one right here. Because the difference between the amount of radiation coming from the body versus coming back from the room to the body, the difference is only about 60 joules. So if I read the first answer, I would say, are they talking about the difference between how much is radiated from the body and how much is received back from the room? That difference is about 60 joules. But they specifically state the amount of energy radiated by the body and that would be more than 460, so therefore 60 would not be correct. Again, sometimes in these questions, the, the way they answer, ask the question, it could be easily misinterpreted. So you got to be very careful about sticking exactly to the statement and taking it at its face value. So in that case, the body radiates more than 460 joules per second, so A is incorrect. If they had said the net radiation away from the body or from the body minus the radiation that comes back from the room, then the 60 joules would be about correct. So sometimes you've got to be very careful about interpreting the questions correctly. Well, you're not going to freeze to death. No, that's, that's true. It's not that cold.